In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys how I went from a JV swimmer to committing to the number one men's swim team in the NCAA. I'm gonna break down all of my four years from when the time I was a freshman in high school all the way to when I was a senior in high school. And at the end, I'm gonna share with you guys some actionable tips that you guys can take to have similar like success. So without further ado, let's get right into my freshman year of high school. So for most of my life, I was a basketball player. I did not really swim. I had a pool in my backyard growing up and I would sometimes race my dad or race my family friends that came over but I really didn't have any competitive swimming experience. From time to time, I did summer league swimming, but as soon as basketball started back up, I instantly dropped swimming once again. In eighth grade, I moved back to California, and in an effort to make some friends, I decided to join the local summer league swimming team. After setting a lofty goal at the beginning of this season to become the best at the 50 backstroke in the rec swimming league, I managed to complete it in going a 27.1 to win the 50 backstroke for the 13-14 boys. Despite the success in the summer league swimming, I decided to once more go back to basketball and I played my freshman year of basketball on the, my high school's basketball team. After a disappointing season riding the bench, I decided that it was time for a shift and I went out for my high school swim team. On the high school swim team, they had a tryout and you got to choose an event to try out in. I tried out in the 100 backstroke and after doing a time trial, we found out that I was the number two fastest 100 backstroker on my high school team, meaning that I had qualified for the varsity team. However, when the varsity coach came and asked me to be on varsity, I told him that I'd much rather swim with my friends on JV as I was really just doing this for fun. And we went with that for the rest of the season. After tearing up the JV swim league, I ended up accidentally qualifying for NCS or the Northern Coast Sections Championship Meet, which is the equivalent to state today. Due to this, I actually had to move up to varsity for the end of the season and wasn't able to train with my friends. However, this success furthered my need to be a swimmer. At those time trials at the start of the year, I went a 106 in the 100 yard backstroke. And by the end of the season at NCS, I went a 56 in the 100 backstroke, a 10 second drop. Carrying my success from high school swimming, I went back to summer league swimming and won the 15 to 18 year old 100 backstroke as a 15 year old in a time of a 54.1. So in the span of four months, I had dropped from a 106 all the way to a 54 in the 100 backstroke. Big jumps. And that brings me to my sophomore year. After my freshman year of high school, my family moved from the state of California up to Seattle, Washington. So I had a choice to make. In California, basketball and swimming were in separate seasons. However, in Washington, they were one and the same. My choice simply came down to who would email me back quicker, the basketball or the swim coach. The swim coach responded to my email in a rapid 30 minutes and the basketball coach took over a month to get back to me, so I became a swimmer. I joined a club swim team up in Washington and went from doing about 2,000 yards in the pool to about 10,000 yards a day. At our winter championship meet, I dropped another half second in the 100 backstroke bringing me down to around a 53 mid and the 100 backstroke. When high school swim season started, I knew that this was the place for me. I really loved my coach, really loved my teammates, and we had a great team, and we were contending for a state title. At the same time, my relationship with my club coach started to crumble as my goals really didn't meet eye to eye to, with his, and my practice structure was nowhere near where I knew it needed to be. I wasn't going to be doing the distance sets that he wanted me to be doing, I'm a sprint backstroker. It just never was gonna work out. I slowly started practicing more and more with my high school swim team and got really close with them. At state, I dropped another three quarters of a second, bringing my 100 backstroke down to a 52.75 second. In addition to this, I won two state championships on relays as a part of my high school swim team, and we also broke the state record in the 4x50 freestyle relay, so it was a super fun experience. Given that it was 2016, our sectionals meet was going to be held long course to allow people to qualify for the Olympic trial. Myself not having done a bunch of long course training, I did awful. I heard that the other local club team had just gotten a new coach who was a former Canadian Olympian backstroker. This was my sign. I knew I needed to make a change. Something that I learned along the way was that in order for you to have success, your coach and your goals have to be aligned. In doing this, your club coach has to vouch for you to all these college swim coaches. And if my club coach and I didn't get along, he was not going to be the right advocate for me to continue my swimming career and one day hopefully make it to be a college swimmer. With that in mind, I decided to switch teams. And by the end of the summer, I had gone a 59 and 100 long course backstroke qualified myself for the Futures Championships. 
things are starting to look up for me, and that brings me to my junior year. With my new club team, I began my junior season. Now for most high school swimmers, your junior year is going to be the most important, as this is what college coaches will look at times for to see if you're able to go compete at the next level. This also kind of filters out where people will land, whether it be D1, D2, or D3. With that in mind, I decided to sit down with my current club swim coach and go over some of the goals that I had by the time I left this program. I talked to him about the fact that I was suffering in school by going to so many morning practices on my old team and that it was just affecting me at afternoon practice. Additionally, I talked with him about how I wanted to develop my 200 speed, as a lot of college coaches want to make sure that you not only can swim one event, but you can swim two events. 100 and 200 backstroke in college were my bread and butter. Additionally, I decided to cut out a lot of distractions in my life and stick to a solid training plan. This involved going to weights, going to one practice a day, sometimes a morning practice, and getting solid sleep. Despite not having a junior nationals cut, my new coach brought me to junior nationals to get some exposure and to see what it was going to take to get to that next level. He brought me as a relay only swimmer and I made the best of it. Attending junior nationals really set a fire under me and really propelled me to get to that next level of swimming. At junior nationals, I was able to drop my 100 backstroke down again to a 51 mid 100 backstroke. With this, I started emailing college coaches and asked to come on unofficial visits. Due to the connections of my new club swim coach, he helped me get in at USC and I took an unofficial visit to USC in the, my junior year winter. After my 5100 backstroke at Junior Nationals, I backed it up by going a 50.25 in the 100 backstroke and winning the Washington State title. From there, I went to senior sectionals and had the goal of going a 49 in the 100 backstroke Despite not getting there, I went a 50.1, another best time, and developed my 200 backstroke a lot, going a 148, 200 backstroke. With those times, I was able to go compete at the D1 level. However, I wasn't at the elite level of the schools that I wanted to be going to. Texas, Cal, Michigan, Indiana, Stanford, those big players weren't really going to consider me with these times at the moment. My club coach knowing this decided to take me some of the big national meets that summer and took me down to the Speedo Grand Challenge in Irvine, California. While there, I didn't have the best swim meet, but I was able to show off my six foot six frame and share with college coaches how I was new to the sport of swimming and had lots of development left to go. One of those coaches was Cal assistant coach at the time, Yuri Sugiyama. From there, that was furthered by Cal later in the summer offering me an official visit to come to Cal. From there, the rest of the summer, I used my trip to Cal as leverage to get other trips going into my senior year. As I mentioned earlier, your junior year is most likely the most important year in terms of short course yard swimming, which is what the college swimming NCAA format is competing in. So. Due to this, throughout the year, I was constantly sending emails to college coaches, and thanks to the strong connections that my club swimming coach had, I was able to get a bunch of potential interest from coaches. So by the time my senior year came around, I had trips planned to Cal, ASU, Michigan, and Indiana. I don't wanna go into all the details of it. I'll save all the details of the official visits for another video, but at the end of it, I ended up choosing Cal, the school that I'd been dreaming of swimming at since my summer league swim days. Committing to arguably the number one swimming school in the country, this gave me a monster amount of confidence going into my senior year. At junior nationals in my senior year, I went from not even making the meet my junior year to getting sixth place overall. My best time for my junior year was a 50.1 and I had a goal of going 49. At junior nationals, I completely eclipsed 49 going a 48.9 in the 100 yard backstroke. Additionally, despite eating two burritos in between prelims and finals, I managed to go a 146 in the 200 backstroke and I threw up all over after. Following my success at Junior Nationals, my success continued at High School State where I almost broke the state record going a 48 high in the 100 backstroke, just narrowly missing that record. And I won the race by almost three seconds, so it was fun. At senior sectionals that year, I went a 48.1 in the 100 backstroke, a time that if I would have done it at the high school state swim meet, would have broken the record. But that aside, I also went a 145 in the 200 backstroke, and that wrapped up my short course yards swimming experience in high school. But enough about me. I want to share with you guys three actionable tips that you guys can take to help transform your high school swimming experience to have success in getting to swim at the college of your choice. Here you go. So it starts with finding the right coach. I went through five different coaches before having number six be the right one, Andrew Wen, my last and best club coach I ever had. 
Andrew took me to a bunch of national level meets and got me the exposure that I needed to get my foot in the door to becoming a D1 swimmer. So my second tip is know what works for you in your training and stick to it. When I sat down with my coach during my junior year, as I mentioned earlier, I told him that morning practices just didn't really work for me. So with that in mind, we came up with a plan that would help me ensure that I was at my best at those afternoon practices and getting the most out of the dry land and strength training. Additionally, developing my 200 pace really helped my 200 backstroke grow. And this was another huge selling point when it came to college swimming. And college coaches loved that I could swim not only the 100, but the 200 as well. My third and final tip is set yourself up for success. And what I mean by that is having a strong environment around you that can support you. My teammates and my coaches had goals that were aligned with me. My teammates were constantly motivating me and also wanted to get to that level of being a college swimmer. So having a unified group around me that was pushing towards one goal really helped me feel like it wasn't just me who was alone doing it. My quick rise to swimming success using these tips definitely won't yield the same results for everyone. I have to say, it was definitely helpful to have the 6'6 frame that I do. If you want to see a full recap of my whole college swimming career in under four minutes, make sure to check out the video down in the description. Make sure to like this video if you guys like swimming tips like this and subscribe to my channel for more swimming and college recruiting tips. And with that, that's gonna do it for this video. See you guys next week.